Welcome to the Real Estate Show on KMED this December weekend of 2015. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brett, the real estate guys, with you. I'm a principal broker with John L. Scott, and Joe's a broker with John L. Scott Real Estate in Southern Oregon. We get together with you once a week here on KMED to talk about all sorts of real estate related topics and issues and just general stuff. And it's been a good year, hasn't it? We found out on a TV show we did earlier this week. Uh, it was a pretty good year for home building in Jackson County. Brad Bennington, you know, is there. Uh, look at lending. The lenders are, are pretty happy cats as well because uh, there's a lot of lending going on, Joe. And, you know, overall, a lot of sales continuing, a lot of pending sales. And so, um, heck, you know, it's a pretty good time compared to when we started five and a half years ago and it's pretty gloomy time in yeah, the I, housing market. I don't know if there's a lot of brokers out there doing a lot of skiing yet or getting their snowmobiles tuned up yet because the it really hasn't been a downtime. The activity stayed pretty steady. Yeah, we hope we hope uh, hope Mount Ashland opens this weekend That'd too. Be, That'd be even better for us all. Well, here on the show today, David Sprague is uh, with Umpqua Bank Lending and has joined our show today. Dave, nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me here. Umpqua Bank Lending. It, it's a uh, it, it, it's like a you're like a bank, what a mortgage broker in a bank. Yeah, we're really kind of a mortgage company that's inside the bank and uh, act more like a mortgage broker and are able to get things done like a mortgage broker would. So yeah. now, Dave, you play. You're from North Medford High. You played yes, for sir. the Black Tornado. Yes, sir. And you played for the University of Oregon. Yes, sir. We were saying this. You're probably one of the first ducks we've had on our show. We had a lot of beavers. You know, there's a lot of beavers around. Yeah. But the uh, IQ just went up in the room yeah, just like yeah, that. No, huh? we, we, we're smarter today because yeah. you're here. Anyway, you've been involved with lending. How, you've been in this for a long time. Yeah, started in 1999. So I've seen uh, a, cu- a few cycles, you know, with yeah. uh, things were a little bit tougher in the the high eights when I started mm. and then uh, got yeah. down into the sixes and now we're in the fours. You, so. must, you must have been thrilled when they were down around the two and a half level, weren't you? Something yeah, like that. Yeah. Well, we anyway. always like to see lower rates. So. <laughs> oh, we do. Thank you for coming here today. Absolutely. Also on the show is Matt Allen, who's a, uh, a I guess, a lender with a Pacific Residential Mortgage, correct? Like that. Matt, nice to have you here as well. Thank you for having me. So you, you're like, I like Dave. You've been in this business quite a long time. I have, yes. You tell us where you started. Uh, I started off in the brokerage world, had my own uh, brokerage for a while, uh, and then uh, went to uh, Cox Beard Hall and Associates, which is now Pacific Residential Mortgage. Oh, that's where that came from. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you've been doing that? How long have you been there? Uh, I've been uh, uh, Cox Beard, or, sorry, Pacific Residential Mortgage uh-huh. for about a year now. Oh, so. Okay. So it's still new there in that particular name. Well, well, under that name, yeah. Yeah. And what's interesting to Matt is here, Joe, is that he just handles reverse mortgages, and whereas Dave, you 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 don't touch these, right? Yeah, I I send them to Matt. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good referral to have. You're the only one doing the, just, you know, do kind of the thing. Just the nature of the name of it sounds like the whole process is backwards. Yeah, right, to well, Dave. I, I was I, I was surprised that that uh, that you would specialize. You know, people specialize in different things, but you specialize just in this particular area. I'm just curious as to why you did that, to Matt. Well, it, 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 you know, for me, I'm a big marketing guy. And so one of the things that I realized is that having a niche uh, can really help you stand out. Uh, and, you know, and Dave can attest to this, that if you have to do a lot of different loans, you got to know a lot of things about a lot of different loans. And it can be a little overwhelming. And so, uh, you know, specializing in the reverse mortgages, I mean, I know that product inside and out. I know who I need to be networking with. I know who my potential clients are. It just makes everything a lot easier uh, for me. And there's not a lot of people that do these loans either. So it's easy for me to go to Dave and say, hey, I'm the reverse mortgage guy in the Valley and, you know, get those referrals. So um, it's, it's been a blessing. I really enjoy uh, this product and the, and the people that I'm working with. So it's something that we've not talked about on our show. So Dave and Matt were on our, our TV show that we did at RVTV this week and it's playing right now on the, on the cable channels was that how little I knew how little I knew about a reverse mortgage and you, you, you were talking to you and I'm going well I'm a dummy here so I actually I actually studied this week Joe the rest of the week to learn some more about it so I got all sorts of good questions for you now okay I got right, better questions perfect. for you in a little bit before we go to that let's talk about the market Dave uh, what are you seeing I mean you, you're you're a lender you're seeing uh you're seeing a lot of this market. Uh, tell us what, to, what your opinion is here as we sit into, here in mid-December almost. Yeah. I mean, it's the market's been going strong. I mean, typically in, in our line of work, you get into November, December, maybe a little bit of January, things tend to slow down. Uh, we call it our slower time mm-hmm. of year, but the reality is the market's been so hot that we really haven't seen a slowdown. Yeah. Uh, just came from a title company and a signing earlier today, and every room was booked there. Everybody's Jeez. in there signing. I mean, and we're in mid-December. So yeah. the market's been hot, you know. Real estate sales are good. 
you know, we're kind of at a stable place where we're not seeing values spiking quickly, but kind of a steady value and, and uh, interest rates are staying low. So it helps, you know, buyers with lower interest rates. It helps it, mm. you know, prices aren't, you know, prices are going up, but they're not going up at 20 or 25% a year like we saw 10 years ago. Right. So. Remember, we had uh, the county assessor was in here uh, a few weeks ago, and, you know, 7% was the average real market value gain in Jackson County in uh, on January 1st of 2015. Remember, that was a year ago when right. that value came out. So uh, I, we can't, it'll be interesting to see what it is on January 1st, 2016, because it's definitely got to go up in some places. But remember, it didn't go up in all places. So it's the average uh, that you see around that. Well, if you look, just to tell you, how, how, what are the types of loans that people are getting right now that, that you're predominating? Because we, we hear all sorts of different stories. You know, it was FHA loans. Everybody was getting those. We, we now, Tell us where, where that status is. Yeah, so FHA, USDA used to be a little bit more popular as, as lending got tougher. Some of those government loan programs were available, lower down payments, you know, available for more people to use. Um, as lending has loosened up a little bit, we're seeing more and more of the conventional loans come back. So... Um, those programs have become more and more predominant. Um, they've loosened up on their guidelines, so it's become easier for us to, you know, somebody that only has 3 or 5% down now instead of having to go FHA can do it conventionally, and it's a better loan program for them in the long run. And right? why is it a better loan program now? Because you think you, you would think that an FHA program would be you know, <clears throat> a great program, right? And here, here you are saying... No, a conventional loan is actually better. So what, what's the difference now? Why do you say that? The biggest piece of it is with FHA, for example, they charge a monthly mortgage insurance premium. Right. And you get that with a conventional loan as well if you're putting less than 20% down. With FHA, though, they will never remove that private mortgage insurance until you sell the home or refinance that loan. So you're stuck with that private mortgage insurance and can never get it off your loan, even with homes appreciating. A conventional loan... If you put 5% down, there's a possibility that maybe three to five years down the line, you've got enough appreciation in your home that you've got that 20% plus equity and can request from your lender that that private mortgage insurance be removed. Mm -hmm. Well, when mortgage insurance is 100 or $200 or $300 as part of your payment, yeah. that's a big chunk yeah. that you can drop off and not have to deal with that as far as your monthly payment. And down payments on conventional, as we will, when I bought my house in Ashland in the early, you know, 1994, we'd have 20% down on that loan, you know, and it was Aunt Geraldine, you know, <laughs> that was a day, you know, helped me in that particular on the state, but you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. There's programs out there with as little as 3% down for conventional loans. So Jeez. if you are a, a first time home buyer, which is really anybody that hasn't owned a home in the last three years, yeah. you can qualify with as little as 3% down on a conventional loan. And how are you handling closing costs? Because, you know, Joe and I, we, we see it all the time. You know, closing costs can, who pays them can, you know, can rattle a deal. I mean, can end a deal. Yeah. So, really well, just, what are mostly seen, I guess? Sellers not paying many closing costs these yeah. days. <laughs> it really just depends on who the borrower is. I mean, you, you know, if you've got a borrower that has minimal down payment, minimal funds, typically we'll, you know, talk to the agent and let them know that they've got minimal funds so that when they're writing an offer, they're asking for that seller to, to uh -huh. pay for those closing costs. You know, typically it's, you know, you don't have quite as bit of a or as much of a negotiation tool for dropping the price because you're asking the seller for something else already. But uh, -huh. uh really just depends on the, who the borrower is. I mean, we're seeing a lot more buyers out of California. Yeah, They're a lot more affluent, have a lot more cash coming out of their sales in California. So they don't really care about having to pay their own closing costs. So it's, it's, it's an easy thing to do and, when you yeah. have the cash, right? And just over on Manchester in the CMA, I looked at for some clients that are into a new place over there. It was the, the list price to the asking sales price was 100.57, 199.9. I mean, it was they were right at their asking price, and a lot of sellers are getting that. So there's not a lot of room to, to hit up those sellers for much. They're, they're pretty much getting their dollars these days. Yeah. Matt Allen, with the reverse mortgage lending, is it as robust as, as David is saying that the home regular home lending is? Or tell us what that status is in the market in the reverse mortgage area. Yeah, so it's. Uh, I think there would be a lot more reverse mortgages being done if people would actually look into them and educate themselves versus <laughs> uh, hearing what their neighbor has said and how awful they are and the bank steals your house and you know all these other horrible things I hear. 
Um, but it's, you know, in the state of Oregon in October, I think there were uh, 63 reverse mortgages done. 63 in the state? In the entire state. In, in November, okay. And of that, 59 of those were for purchase. So it's, For purchase? Mm-hmm. So uh, homeowners using a, the reverse mortgage wow. to purchase a home. Interesting. Use the reverse mortgage to purchase a home. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And it's 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 just a really misunderstood product. Uh, and FHA itself has done a lot of changes over the last few years to make What's it your a, definition a better of product, a safer product. And uh, so in, uh, I think it was mm-hmm. the end of uh, 14, they made it for the non-borrowing spouse. And... That, that's really critical because it used to be you had to be 62 or older to get onto the loan. Right. And so what was happening is they were leaving the spouse off the loan, off the title, everything. And so the older spouse obviously has a greater chance of dying before the younger spouse. And so when the younger spouse passed or the older spouse passed away, the, the younger, younger spouse, spouse is, wouldn't get it. Yeah, there's there's some issues there. So now uh, if you're married, you both have to be uh, part of that loan. And if you're younger than 62, you're, you, they would consider you a non-borrowing spouse. Um, but it keeps everybody, uh, keeps the, the younger spouse in their property. So that's that's critical. The second thing they came out with was this year in April is uh, financial assessment. So before, you just had to be 62 and have enough equity or uh, a big enough down payment and you would qualify. I mean, there was literally no qualifying. It was just the property itself. Now you have to qualify. We're looking at your last two years of credit history. We're looking at your mortgage and tax insurance payment history. And you have to have a certain amount of disposable income based on household size. So, uh, and the reason they made those changes is because about 10% of those loans were ending up in foreclosure because they couldn't afford to pay their taxes and insurance. Mm -hmm. And so, again, a lot of people are frustrated with that because now they don't qualify. But if you didn't qualify, you're probably going to lose your house anyways to not paying your taxes or you know, not having insurance, the house burning down, you know, something else horrible. So really two really good, powerful changes for the product. Interesting. Now, I would think that most of us, 62 and a half, if you want to get a reverse mortgage, you have to have like own your home, correct? I mean, you have to have a a lot of equity in your home. Um, You do have to have a significant amount of equity. Significant being Uh, 90%, 100%? (laughs) I mean, Um, so... Everything is based on your age. So the younger or the older you are, the more you can borrow. So if you're 62, uh, you're going to need about about 55 percent equity, 50 percent equity in your property. Okay. Um, and so a lot of people, again, think that you have to own your home free right. in order to do that, it. Yeah. But a lot of my clients are doing the reverse mortgage in order to pay off their current mortgage just to free up that monthly cash flow. And so all they're responsible for at that point is taxes, insurance and upkeep of their home. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it can, you know, if you're living on Social Security, you got a tight budget. And if you can free up a few hundred, and if a I thousand own, and if I own And if I own my home, I could free that up mm-hmm. uh, and, and not have that payment. Or, or not, if I, but if I didn't have a payment, I'm basically, am I selling my house kind of off the first of all here and just getting the money now? Um, no, you no. remain on title. I remain on title. You remain on title. So you can do whatever you want with the property. You can sell it. You can refinance it. Um but you know the obviously the lender has a uh, lien against lien, the property because sure. it's, it's a loan. Um, but you have a lot of if you owned your home free and clear, you have lots of different options on how you can use that equity. Um, you can get a line of credit. You can get uh, tenure, which is lifetime payments. So the bank sends you a check every month. Uh, you can do a term payment from for up to ten years. Uh, you can get lump sum of cash. Um, the thing that I like and most people choose is the line of credit. Most and, choose okay. Most choose the line of credit. Yeah. That's, that's what um, I thought. Okay. And the great thing about the line of credit is it actually grows in value. So uh, it, it, it grows at the interest rate plus one and a quarter percent. So if you look at at somebody that was sixty two, uh, they own their home free and clear. They got the line of credit uh, with where interest rates are at plus the one and a quarter percent. In about ten to twelve years, that line of credit is going to double. In about eighteen wow. years, it's going to triple. And in about 23, 24 years, it's quadruple. So if you had a $200,000 line of credit, you're 62. In, let's say, 25 years, you're 87. Now you have an $800,000 line of credit. 
If I lived to be at 87, would be really wondering. <laughs> I don't think I could spend that, but it right. would be you, good to have. You've, it, got a, you've got a birthday right around the corner. That's why you're doing all this research. <laughs> no, okay. I'm just and grilling to, Matt for well, a yeah. you got, These are options becoming open to you. Well, yeah. the, and, you, and, you well, this is the only this is the only area that I have found that the older you get, the more benefits you get from something. You can borrow more the older you get. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's the only thing that... Growing old has an advantage of, I can think, so far. You, you don't like yeah. to be in debt, though, so but, I don't know if that well, works Well, what's interesting, part of what you said, is that most people that are doing this, though, are buying homes. So, Correct. Because I always thought of reverse mortgage, you know, you want to, like, this is for you to stay in my home for mm-hmm. older older people, right? But yeah. they don't now. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing, is is most people are coming to see me with, as far as the refinance is concerned, is because they've experienced some sort of life event. They've they've lost okay, a spouse. Sure. They've lost income. Um uh, the the house of cards of credit card debt is starting to crumble. Um, whatever it may be, they they've experienced a major life event yeah. where they have to look at a reverse mortgage. And people need to do that. We always talk about you know for our listeners to be smart real estate consumers, and this is an option yeah. that really people do need to look at. I know talk about fees and things like that are always out there, but you know they got to look at this kind of stuff. The real estate show continues here on KMED. We got a break coming up, and we're coming right back more with David Sprague and Matt Allen talking about financing options. Here on the Real Estate Show, and we're coming right back after this. Real Estate Show rolls on here on KMED this December of 2015. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brett, the Real Estate Guys, with you, and hope you're having a terrific weekend and make something uh, enjoyable happen. Christmas shopping? You do? Are you doing that? Are you doing that? Yeah, no, I won't go near the mall. <laughs> <laughs> but kids, we're just... all the grandkids stuff came online. I won't. I won't even go there. A lot of lot of people out. It's, it's a fun time of the year. A lot of music, and uh, I like the you know the peace on earth, goodwill to men. Have Still you, rings true today, doesn't it? We could use some of that. Have you even been by my house at night? Yeah. Have you even seen the, no, the I, display I don't. this year? <clears throat> no, I haven't we, seen any of those things. The neighbors across the street, the new neighbors went. Came with some heavy artillery, so we had to LED up a little bit. For the well, here on the show today, contest. we're talking with David Sprague from Umpqua Bank, a home lending, and Matt Allen from Pacific Residential Mortgage here on the Real Estate Show from the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors. And we'll just look at the stats just to show you what's going on here, fellas. The pending sales from November of 2015 to 2014 are up 51%, uh, uh, Dave, which is which is a, a pretty pretty good. Uh, new listings, and that's the area you know that we're we're, we're down in. From a year ago, they're up 36%, but the gap, there's still more sales that are taking place in Jackson County than new listings to replace them. That's been our trend now for months, and that's causing the the spike. It's causing pressure on the prices to stay high and things like that. I mean, there's no question. That's, a, that's an interesting stat. The average days in the market is 49 days. Wow. I mean, that is really low. Remember, uh, one of the things John L. Scott's been trying to work on is you know, sell every listing within 30 days. And it's a great, it's, yeah. it's a terrific deal, but it's 49. That's really low. Uh, people are getting, because of the sales price, because of the inventory low, uh, sellers are getting 96% of their asking price, which is, you know, that's, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. I've seen it as low as, you know, in the 80s, in the high 80s, yeah. actually, over the past. The other interesting part of our statistic-wise is the available homes per buyer. And that's, what, and that's our problem here in our market. It's down 16%. From a year ago, with only four homes available per buyer. You know, when you go out and show properties, you show more than four. So, you know, you're in a problem right there. With the month's supply of inventory, that's the real story here. It's down 27% from a year ago. There's only countywide a 2.9 month supply. But if you break that down further, if you're in the $150,000 to $250,000 category, there's a 0.8 month supply. And the biggest jump, the biggest drop in that was in the five hundred to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar category, which was a ten month supply. Now it's down to three month supply. That's an active part of the market. Is it that mid uh, luxury area? Isn't it? Yeah, we're yeah. definitely seeing that kind of come back as far as the buyers that are out there. Yeah. Not only people moving from out of state, but we're also seeing those buyers that are starting to sell their three to four hundred thousand yep. dollar house now looking and. And upgrading to that kind of five to seven fifty range, yeah. As well as a lot of the, you know, we were talking about this earlier. The the new construction yeah. out there is kind of being built in that five yeah. to six to seven hundred thousand dollar range. So a lot of that in East Medford, isn't it? I know Joe spent you spent uh, a lot of time this week. Uh, well, last few weeks, you you have a lot of planning commission stuff going on around the county, isn't there yeah. right now? Yeah. Is it new stuff? Is it new? What are they? What are, the, they, what are the, they looking to do? The county's had 14 hours the last two Thursdays of meetings on the marijuana ordinance, okay. and it's about the setbacks and 
some of the agricultural issues, and it's a very much a property owners land use. Related issue. issue, yeah, and they have had the county courthouse auditorium packed to an overflow last Thursday and packed to the gills again this Thursday, and it took yeah uh, eleven hours to get through well, public what, testimony. What they had over four hundred people at the at the, the OLCC, uh, at that OLCC yeah. hearing on this thing. So we talk about you know legal mar- recreational marijuana's effect on real estate. I, I don't know if you see it in lending. Do you, do you does it come across in lending, Dave, yeah. uh, Matt, or or is it not? You don't even deal with it you from your you, level. You, you start to see a lot of out-of-state buyer. Uh, you know, we had somebody that moved out here from New York and was really interested oh. in properties in Cave Junction, which, you know, having <laughs> yeah. been born and raised here, you, <laughs> yeah. don't, you don't find a lot of interest in properties in Cave Junction. But, you know, a property that has a huge greenhouse and water it, it rights. It has water and, rights. Uh, they've yeah. become very popular. They've become very popular. Yeah. So, Well, the, the rural sales, you know, are up again, and, and the median price for rural properties uh, continues to climb. And I don't think that's going to change. So. They, but until they get those ordinances settled, Joe, it seems like uh, I mean everybody wants it settled to know exactly what the rules right, are going right. to be. I think more. I think that's the biggest thing. Right? Oh boy, and it's it, there's a ton of testimony and a ton of issues, really um, heartfelt issues in some of the access to medicine that these patients are expressing. So yeah, I have a lot of work to do. You know, the Medford Council had their public testimony on their marijuana ordinances, and they ended up just tabling the whole issue. And uh, setting it up to put to the voters next year in, in yeah. the 2016 election because it was getting to be a real hornet's nest. Yeah, well, th- th- those kind of things just give people like us stuff to talk about, you know, which is uh, which is kind of cool because or they uh, keep us in small rooms pushing <laughs> buttons for long hours at a time. And yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Dave, what about is there any first time uh, first time home buyer programs or I mean, it's so, you know, not very long ago that was that was that was the thing in lending, and then all of a sudden we didn't hear anything. Is it? Do you have something like that, or what's yeah, out there for you, that? You know, there's a lot of different down payment assistance programs that are available to first time buyers. Um, you know, depending on w- which direction you want to go, there's some different opportunities there. There's also some different loan programs that require less down payment because you're a first time home buyer. Uh, if you've owned a home in the past, the definition of a first time home buyer is somebody hasn't owned a home in the last three years. So Really, don't be dissuaded because right. you know maybe you've you know Owned we're, a home we're starting before, right. we're starting to see a lot of people that are coming back from a foreclosure yep. or short mm-hmm. sale mm-hmm. in two thousand eight, nine, ten, and, and lending options are becoming available for and them. They're again good as buyers, well. yeah, and yeah. they're good buyers yeah. that went through hard times, and and so a lot of options are coming out for them as well that are that are available. So we're starting to see more and more of that, which is going to be a pretty big influx of of buyers coming back into the market. Which mm-hmm. you know, again, you talking about the stats of inventory available is just going to continue to go down. So. Mm-hmm. No kidding. I think you're right. Whatever happened to USDA loans? Those were one of my favorite loans because so many people took advantage of the 0% down and living in small towns and everything. And all of a sudden, it seems like we don't hear about them anymore. Yeah, still a great option. Mm-hmm. We don't see them necessarily quite as much in Jackson County. As prices have gone up, it's become a little bit tougher. Ooh. Because, guidelines because, or, it's, yeah. because it's, it's it's so much money you're going to be able to loan on it yeah I mean, oh you're seeing this world pro- okay all right yeah yeah so you, you know they're still available for people they just mm-hmm. become a little bit tougher to get as prices go up there's income limitations for household right. income um so it becomes a little bit tougher in josephine county uh you know one thing that's nice it's the same with ashland but but hard mm-hmm. to find a house but in the in the city of grants pass that qualifies that entire area qualifies for usda lending right where in Jackson County, you have to be outside of Medford, Central Point, yeah. city limits, and are really limited to to the outer county areas. Well, I remember people saying that if it wasn't for USDA loans, the, the real estate market in Klamath and Josephine and Douglas County would have absolutely tanked, you know, during the recession because there was no no lending except USDA loans. I mean, that's what people were getting. That was the only thing available. So, well, it's interesting how the I, I've never seen if we talk about such a, a a market or industry that it is so supply and demand driven. It really is from loans to, you know, look at look at their inventories that we have and, and those kind of things. It's uh, it's quite remarkable. Back to the reverse mortgage side of things with with Matt Allen from Pacific Residential Mortgage. So so I've got to be sixty two. I got to have equity in my house. But you're talking about a lot more options than I didn't realize. But tell me about one of the things I hear about reverse mortgages are people say that they really have excessive fees. Are they excessive? Or tell me what what that entails in a reverse mortgage or what someone should look for in that? Um, yeah, I mean, the fees are definitely higher than a traditional loan. Uh, with It is an FHA product. 
<laughs> and so FHA backs backs a reverse mortgage. Yeah, it's okay. FHA insured, and um, so the upfront mortgage insurance is going to vary uh, depending on the uh, loan to value. And so it could be as little as a half a percent up front, or it could be two and a half percent up front. Okay. So as you can imagine, if you're looking at, and, and what's really interesting is all the fees are based off of the appraised value, okay. not the loan amount. And so, you know, it's really interesting because whereas Dave, if somebody is buying a $300,000 house, but they're putting half down, all the fees are based off $150,000. Okay. In my situation, everything is based off the three hundred thousand, regardless of how much you're putting down. Based on the appraisal, Correct. not what the loan may. Okay, Correct. right. So, so it's it's difficult to compare a reverse mortgage uh, to a traditional loan uh, as far as fees because they're 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 calculated completely different. But yes, mm-hmm. they they are higher. I'm not going to deny that sure. factor. Okay, but as long as you know going into mm-hmm. what it is, that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying is that people just need to know those things. Uh, because sometimes they may say yes, sometimes they may say no, depending on what Correct. your situation is. That's why you got to come in and talk to you about it. <laughs> yeah. Because there's more options than I'd ever realized. I want to ask you, we've got a break coming up here, but I know a lot of people who take the property tax exemption uh, in, our, in our state. Can they get a reverse mortgage? I'll put that question to Matt when we come back. The Real Estate Show here on KMED rolls on. Don't forget, you can check our shows out at realestateshoworegon.com or on YouTube as well. We are coming right back after this. Real Estate Show continues here on KMED this December of 2015. Pete Bell Castro with you. And hey, thanks for joining us uh, here mid December. Hope you're going to have a terrific holiday season and enjoy the nights out. Please be careful driving, that's for sure. And watch out for the weather and all those good things that, that are happening out there this weekend. Next week here on the show, we continue back with you and uh, our year end shows. We're continuing on. Uh, what did we just go through in 2015? Got lots of good comments with that we did a tv show last uh, tuesday that's now playing on the rv tv charter and ashland home net cable channels in fact you can hear our guests that uh, david uh, uh, dave sprague and uh, matt allen are on that show as well so you can kind of see what they look like as well as hear them uh, as we are here on radio today anyway here on the show we're talking about financing options matt we're talking about reverse mortgages is what he handles exclusively at pacific residential mortgage and before we do that break there i know lots of uh, well, I've had clients and lots of people who are 62 and over who own their properties and are taking advantage of the Oregon uh, homestead exemption, the property tax exemption, where they don't pay their property tax, they they stop paying the property tax that goes as a lien on their property and then it's sold, you know, after you die. Uh, can you still get a reverse mortgage if I've got that? If, if you have that exemption, yes, you can still do a reverse mortgage, but you cannot, that, that, that exemption has to go away. You cannot oh. have a reverse mortgage. And exempt your taxes. You used to be able to do that, which was amazing. I was going to say, right? that's a heck of a deal. I mean, yeah. that really is. Seriously. Just, just pay your, your insurance and you're good to go. Yeah. But um, they, they got rid of that several years ago. So, so. If I, so, so for people who have right now are getting the property tax exemption, mm-hmm. if they choose that they want to go a reverse mortgage path, they own their home, they have a different whatever their situation is, they would then have to give up that exemption uh, to get the reverse mortgage, Correct. And they have to give it up, and they have to pay those taxes off. You got to come back and pay. You got to pay the, the back taxes off. Yes. Ooh. Oh yeah, dear. It's, it's a no, lien that against does the change property. That. Yeah. And you, a, and you can't have a lien against the property. We, we got to pay off those liens. Yeah. So they have to be paid off, and you have to waive your exemption. Well, that's an interesting, uh, um, interesting dilemma for some people who are approaching sixty-two. You know, should I, should I get the exemption, or should I think and I may get a reverse mortgage down the road? And I don't want to have to pay that that property tax off. It's thirty thousand dollars or something sitting there for seven or eight years. Whoa, wow! Interesting to know that. Well, those mm-hmm. are good things, you know, that people need to know yeah. as they go into go into these things. David Sprague, what about renters? I mean, we we talk about right now that uh, the rent rental prices are really going up. I mean, Danielle Roberts last week uh, from uh, uh, Sterling West Property Management told us that again. So w- renters. They may, be, they may be better off buying right now. Yeah, and the I programs mean, seem to be easy to do. Yeah, I tell people all the time. I mean, if you're a renter and you're paying over $1,000 a month in rent, it's, you know, sit down with the loan officer and talk to him about your options. Maybe come up with a six-month plan. Maybe it doesn't work for you today, but maybe six months from now. Yeah. We look at a lot of people that have, you know, tax refunds coming that can be used for down payment. They may qualify for a 100% financing program. There's a lot of options that are out there for them to buy a house and have their payment be the same or less than what yeah. they're paying in rent. So there's yeah. a lot of things that are out there for those renters 
who, you know, may think it's, you know, they're not going to qualify. It's too tough. It's too hard to get yeah. a loan. I've heard in the national media that it's too hard to get a loan. So they don't do anything instead of sitting down and setting up a time to talk with a loan yeah. officer and, and figure something out. Well, it's really neat to do that. In, in rates, I mean, here at the end of the year, what are you quoting today? I mean, this week, I mean, what are you, what are you yeah, doing in rates? It's amazing. We're still in kind of that 4% yeah, range. 4% I mean, range. you know, forecasts are still in that 4% range for the next year. You know, nothing that's kind of showing that those are going to change. You see some fluctuations. Sometimes we dip it down into the, the high threes. Sometimes we get up into the lower fours. But yeah. we've kind of been in that that same range over this past year. And, and, and uh, 15-year loans are amazingly low Yeah, low, low threes. Aren't they? So, yeah. Low threes. Yeah, if you can afford to get into a 15-year fixed, now's the time to do it. Because yeah. I, I don't know that those rates are going to get any better. I, I see those and I go, boy, I wish I could do that. You know, yeah. I truly do because they really are there. Well, it's interesting to think you both have been you both uh, in in the reverse mortgage world, and I did not know, man. This is the interesting part about having you on the show was uh, most of us get our information from you know those TV blurbs, you know yes. that, that you see not you know in, in ad nauseum, and they really don't tell the story. They really don't tell the story of the options that people have on this on a reverse mortgage. Yeah, you know, and that's a lot of the blowback from the public right now is 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 the way that the reverse mortgage is portrayed and the way to use it, which is, you know, go on a vacation and spend your money and you know it's it, but for most people it's just a a I'm gonna say life saving way to continue to live in their home and be able to afford to live in their home. Mm -hmm. um, it you know I don't know anybody that's that gets a reverse mortgage and then just goes out and just blows it on a bunch of toys and vacations and everything else. They're doing it because they need to do it. And while you're 62 and over, you, the, your, your time has passed for the the <laughs> yeah. boats and the kinds of things. And maybe travel is good, but you're right. No one's going to go take all that money and just go blow it because right. it would be stupid to do that. Right. And you, you, you're not going to do that to get the reverse mortgage in the first place, I would I would think. Yeah. I, yeah. Most people are doing it because of they, they need to do it. There's a need behind looking at a reverse mortgage what for both of you what what's the biggest obstacle you see right now for people that are finding in terms of loans with you what are what are the what are the big problems that 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 you're seeing from uh from consumers right now is, is there one is or is it uh um credit scores or what kind of keeps people from from getting what you're what they what they hope to seek yeah i think a lot of people are just afraid to to seek it and and that's kind of what i was saying with renters is you, you know there's a lot more loan programs and options that are available and out there than than people realize. And uh -huh. sitting down and talking to a loan officer and looking at your options, and again, may not work for you today, but maybe it's six months or a year down the line with a little bit of planning that that works for you. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more that's out there for them than than they think there is, and and you know we're here to help and advise them on that. Yeah. Do you think that uh, 2016 uh, is is going to continue this? I mean, I look at the stats, and I I I was always the pessimist, and you know I get always chided for that you're so pessimistic but everybody who's come into this studio for now better part of two years i think all are saying the same thing to us to our listeners that this market is definitely has changed and it's and it's, and it's doing really well yeah I, I think you know rents continue to go up there's a, a lack yeah. of inventory that's there so as rents continue to go up you see more renters getting into the housing market again as you know we talked about you're seeing more people that had short sales or foreclosures yeah. that you know, we're kind of reaching those timelines of four or seven years that yeah. are coming back into the market and are able to buy again. So I don't see any uh, any downside to the market. I, you know, I, I don't either. I mean, I think we're not having the steep increases in value. It's steady. It's okay. It's a heck of a better place to invest in real estate than it is in the stock market. I think it's certainly in real estate as we're seeing. So, and that's what a lot of people are doing. We need more inventory though. We need more multiple units and we need more new construction and, and more affordable types of properties. What would really help us? Because I don't see anything happening to relieve our problem. Absolutely. That's, that's the thing. It's, it's just going to continue to get worse and worse as more people want to come to our valley. Mm -hmm. The last word to Matt Allen, the uh, reverse mortgages. People need to come and see you, first of all. Yeah, th th there's just a lot of misinformation yeah, there that is. is keeping people from even exploring this. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a lot of education. It's don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Be a smart real estate consumer. <laughs> Matt Allen, and they can Google both of you and find your Pacific Residential Mortgage and David Sprague is at Umqua Bank Home Lending. Thank you guys for being with us and uh, come Thank back you. again soon, all right? Thanks. Good Appreciate luck to you in 2016 and Happy New Year. That'll do it for the Real Estate Show. Have a great week, everybody. Back next Saturday. God bless, and we'll talk to you then. 
You've been listening to The Real Estate Show on KMED AM and FM Radio, presented by John L. Scott Real Estate of Southern Oregon, along with All Cities Property Management, the Home Builders Association of Jackson County, Ditech Mortgage, the Jackson Soil and Water Conservation District, and the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors. For guest information or to watch a past show, visit us online at realestateshoworegon.com. Join us again next weekend for Southern Oregon's one and only real estate show on KMED.